That's about 10,000 right there. Wow. Okay. That, that's one of the big numbers here. Yeah, you, you nice. happen to pick it. What the? Uh, you, you <laughs> no, would have to, tell this one's only about 2,000. Tell us a little bit, a little bit about this wine. What's, uh, what's so special yes, about it? Well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Romani Conti. Burgundy wines are produced in very limited quantity, mm -hmm. and Romani Conti is the absolute. It, there's a, the cover story of Wine Spectator magazine, this current issue, is Heaven on Earth. Mm. It is the most highly prized, the most expensive, the hardest to get wine in the world. They make it in very wow. limited quantity, and one thing yes. about wine that doesn't make it widgets or books or anything else is when they're done, they're done. They only make right. as much as they can in a given year. How many grapes they've got, and, you know, uh, uh, fluid per ton, whatever it is. Mm. And, uh, and so this wine is here. just as expensive as it gets. Here, really. They typically sell for five to ten thousand dollars a bottle when they're new. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So <laughs> Romani Conti 1990 is about as uh, off the charts as you get in that general direction. Mm. You got three white wines, four or five hundred dollars, and, and the uh, uh, Saint Denis two, three, four, five hundred dollars for the flight. And the uh, the cocktail wines will be Dom Perignon and another so three, I don't know. Cocktail wines, so meaning just when appetizers are being passed yeah, and everything. So in all, pretty close to two thousand dollars per table. Wow. Yeah. And but what of those, which bottle is the most pricey? The most expensive would be the uh, Chateau Pavi Saint Emilion, uh, would be about two hundred two fifty, or the Colgan Nine Estates Syrah is probably around two fifty. Hmm. Yeah, so. Those two are standouts as being. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely do more episodes with this guy. <laughs> I oh. have so many questions. I have I have so much <laughs> gibberish to spew. And uh, <laughs> what is the best? I assume you do some traveling with your work. Quite a bit. So what is the best wine travel trip that you've taken? Oh, um, well, I just recently went to uh, Santa Ynez, and I have to say I was so impressed. It was yeah. so beautiful. Just up here, I've been to Tuscany, Napa, Bordeaux, mm -hmm. other places all mm -hmm. around the world. And I had never been to the one that is the closest growing region to me, and it was spectacular. Mm. There are enough good restaurants up there mm -hmm. that you can have a great week, weekend or week even. Um, it's pretty casual. Uh, there are a lot of great places to go. People are very welcoming, mm -hmm. uh, and it's so beautiful. I was there in March before the grapes were really growing, uh, but it was incredibly green and verdant where uh, when you go during the yeah. harvest season, it gets kind of brown and, and well, more like yellow almost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Bordeaux, uh, uh, for sure, at the we were talking about this earlier, the, mm -hmm. the Smith of the Feet where the Source de Cordelia is. Yeah. They had yeah, one of those bicycles, like the Juliette Binochet kind mm -hmm. of bicycle, mm -hmm. black with a little <laughs> basket in front, and, yeah, you know, yeah. no bar going across mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and I went riding and found myself like actually in vineyards, riding mm -hmm. through with the the dew and the sunlight hitting it. And, I mean, you know. Like something out of look, a movie. Look at me, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> look, look where I am. God is smiling yes. down on you. What a moment <laughs> this is, you know. Don't I wish I had a... And of course, that's when you never have a camera. And the camera does you no good in that moment, no. anyhow. Trying to, to catch the, the, the evanescence yeah. of of the vineyards as the, the morning dew has set along, you know, kind of, we were there in February, so it was cold, and, uh, or May rather, and it was still cold, but uh, what, a, what a beautiful place that was. And I love going to, uh, to Tuscany and the rolling hillsides, mm -hmm. and you see those houses mm -hmm. with the, and they're all the same. They've got those green clapboards that they shut to mm -hmm. keep out the afternoon sun, and they open them up in the morning and the evening, and uh, the, the tile roofs and the cypress trees, and you go, like, you got to be kidding me. Is this a movie set? Yeah. But it's like that, and it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. And, and wherever wine grows, typically it's a beautiful place. I mean, look, you've got these vineyards and rolling hillsides and all this stuff. Nice houses, great food. You know, the wine adventure portion of what you are talking about in your thing mm -hmm. is, that's what it's all about, you know? Going yeah. to these places, going to Napa is, is so fantastic, and the food up there is so great, you know? Right. Of course, three days of, of going up there to eat and drink, and all you want is a tuna sandwich and a glass of milk to be left alone. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's so true. I think that wine is kind of like a, it can be the cherry on top of an experience, you mm. know? And so those are all, it's kind of like what the show is trying to highlight, kind you of see, the lifestyle around wine. I see a different thing. Mm -hmm. Is it, yes, okay, cherry on top, definitely. 
but for me, it's the wine that a lot of times brings the people together mm -hmm. and becomes this fulcrum around which the thing turns. Mm -hmm. And so you might talk about this years later and say, oh, that was the night that we had the 89 Obreon. In, in the six liter bottle, like who will ever forget that? Wow. Well. You know, as it happens, if you go to a lot of these events in the course of a year, as I do, and mm -hmm. dinners and uh, all kinds of things, you do forget. So I've started taking a label from every, from one dinner, mm. one bottle per label for every dinner. And I put them into a book, and it's amazing to me at the end of a year, oh, look, like, look what I did. Wow. Look where I've been. And I forgot that night with, Jimmy Connors and his wife, and you know, didn't we have a lot of laughs? And you know, the producer was there that night, or we did hundred point wines, or whatever it was with my with my wine group, and where we were, and all of that stuff is just so great, you know. And it's and you really do say that was the night that we had that wine, and it was a thing. It was more than the uh, cherry on top. It was actually kind of the meal, right? That it was bringing yeah. you bringing you together. It's funny you. you so you have a wine scrapbook, yes. really, yeah. and we just interviewed someone a couple days ago who is a self-professed wine obsessive, mm -hmm. and I would say anyone that keeps a wine scrapbook is definitely a king <laughs> wine obsessive. Well, I don't keep every <laughs> label, though. I, that's one thing. Is that I, I try to keep it down to one label per dinner, just as a reflection of what it was, and in a way, uh, you, know, you know how people keep uh, ticket subs? Mm-hmm. From concerts? Yeah. It's the same thing, but this is actually a picture, and you know, when I when I say, oh, that was the night, in fact, I can remember a night that I had the 89 Obreon at, at Valentino. It was a 100-point uh, wine dinner. I brought the 89 Obreon. It was everybody's favorite, and of course, there's a, just as human nature, you always root for the home team, you root for your own wine. Mm -hmm. But this one, it, it was no contest. This is one of the greatest wines of all time. Mm. Uh, and and I'm sure on another night there was a better wine, mm -hmm. and uh, and I don't always take the most expensive or the most glamorous uh, label with me. I, I take the one that I think kind of speaks to the evening and or the place that we were when I was in, in Santina. Somebody gave us a bottle, mm -hmm. and they're a winemaker, and so rather than others that were far more expensive, and uh, that was the one that really sort of marked that space and time for me. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, it's just it's. No mystery that you're, so, you love what you do, yes. you know, and that's the dream, really, now, is to do what you love and love what you do, and you clearly do that. That's true. Although, as a dream job, I don't know that I can actually say that because it's cold in these places, okay? <laughs> this one, so this you don't, do you dress this way? Do you dress uh, oh. like what you have on? Is this your work no, clothes? No, no, no. <laughs> so when you come in, like, say this is a, a cellar that you're going to right. organize, mm -hmm. do you come in in long johns? Do you come in in... <laughs> what do you it's a in? hybrid. What's your okay, not exactly long johns. I'm not, not going out to cut the wood in the, you know, freezing forest. But, yeah, I, I have some really nice, you know, warm weather clothes. I have a Xenia over shirt that's, mm -hmm. you know, lined and mm -hmm. like that. And I, I'm conscious that I'm you know, shouldn't be wearing loafers because mm -hmm. it can be cold. And we spend hours at a time wow. in these places, you know, sometimes five, six, seven hours without really ever leaving or sitting down, mm -hmm. uh, trying to put the, all of this, all the pieces together. You know, it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle, but you don't know what it looks like until you're done making oh. it. Interesting. Yeah. And are they all, I assume they're not, all as pristine and beautiful as this one. Oh. I mean, are there any that look like just scary, creepy cobweb caves? Yeah, uh, yeah a little bit. There are, uh, more likely you find people who keep their wine in a wine refrigerator, mm -hmm. and that's not a particularly glamorous mm -hmm. way of, of presenting it, you know. Look around you. I mean, this is, I mean, you said it, this is really a beautiful room. As it happens, the wines in this room are as great as any wines in any wine cellar anywhere in the world, hmm. okay? This, this is it. Uh, now, other people have lots more, maybe more vintages and, and greater quantity. Uh, I'm sure that if you ask my father, he'd tell you he was very happy that he enjoyed it so much. Hmm.